Smith. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, 11 May 2023 meeting. This public hearing is being televised live on St. Mary's County Government TV 95 and the county's YouTube channel. It will remain available for on-demand viewing on the St. Mary's County Government YouTube channel. My name is David Willenborg. To my left is um, Mr. Watts, who is our vice chairman. To his left is member Co Leonard Cole. To uh, my right is uh, Richard Shin. Um, our uh, member Barbara Hill, she is absent today. Um, Tammy Hildebrand, our administrator, is to is here to Richard's right. And then we have Chris Beaver, our attorney. Susie Dean, our recording secretary, you can wave your hand. Very good. <laughs> Kevin Hall, our inspector in the audience, and Deputy Steve Myers, the alcohol enforcement coordinator over there. The first item of, the, of our um, business is going to be approval of the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda for May 11th. Okay, we have a motion to <clears throat> approve the agenda. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Cole. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Next thing we have is to approve of the minutes from April 13th, 2023. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yes, sir. Do we have a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from April 13th, 2023. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Mr. Shin seconds it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Move on to old business, extension of conditional approvals. Um, they're not here, the inspector is calling them. Um, so I'm hoping you can table it because uh, they are making progress. You want me to change the, ta just table it or do you want us to change it in the agenda? Move it down. Move it down. Move it down. Okay. So, can we have a motion to uh, let me let me frame this? You don't need a motion. Don't. Okay. He will pass on it. Yeah. Okay. Next is the table of application. Dave McKay Liquors. Application of Dave McKay to transfer Dave McKay Liquors Class A1 beer wine liquor license location from 37670 Mohawk Drive, Charlotte Hall, Maryland, 20622 to 3005 Three Notch Road, Charlotte Hall, Maryland, 20622. Please come forward and be sworn in, sir. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record. David McKay, uh, 24831 Three Notch Road, Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Okay. Okay, go ahead and please present your application. Where are we at, sir? Um, I was hoping I could have this tabled for one month. There's been some changes. I spoke to Tammy yesterday. There's been some changes to the contract that I sent to the board's attorney um, that I sent to him when, in March. Um, there's been some changes to the contract uh, that we received on May the 4th. And um, um, may cause my application to be changed, to be moved. Um, I was just hoping I could maybe get you guys to table it for one month, if possible. If I need to send this new contract to the board's attorney, I'm more than happy to do so. Can you tell us what those changes are that necessitate the need of a month? I, I, I do. 
I do have a non-disclosure. I understand. Um, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, so the, the contract I believe that Mr. McKay is speaking about is the contract he has with a grocery store uh, that will be the anchor, potential anchor of the grocery store, of the shopping center that the um, liquor store would be located in. And, right, is that correct, Dave? Right. Um, but it's not a contract for anything dealing with the actual liquor store. It's for the, a different store, correct? But, but it, it deals with the shopping center. For the shopping center, right. Right, right. I just want to make sure we're talking about the same contract. Yeah. Okay. Right. But the shopping center is not the liquor store. You're building your liquor store, and it's a separate building, so it's not the shopping center. The contract also talks about the infrastructure to the whole shopping center, the roadways, the, the water, the septic which does involve, yes, the liquor store. Is, may, may I? Go ahead. Is there a, what we, what the board would like to see is a definitive plan for the completion and ultimately opening of this liquor store. Do you have a date in which ground will be broken to begin construction, and preferably, do you have a date for estimated completion and opening of that liquor store? I think, like I said before, it all really depends on the settlement date. Uh, and okay. So the and answer. So am I hearing you say no? You, you don't have a date. Hopefully the settlement date will take place soon, but there is a, a new contract that has been presented. It was presented on May the 4th, and, and, and again, I can, but even the new contract doesn't have a settlement date. Okay. You know, it, everyone likes to do their dual diligence. You know, you like to protect the liquor license that you've had for 30 years, you know, and you do whatever you can to, you know, 30 plus years actually. But, um, you know, I understand where you guys are coming from too, but you know, I'm only asking for 30 more days and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess my concern is, is it's, <laughs> It's not just another 30 days, right? It's been, we've done this, I, I, I'd have to go back and look at the records to see how many times, but it's been a number, a number of times that we've had. To we'll, let's, let's stick with the questioning first and then we'll get to that. Yes, sir. Okay. Fair enough. So. I have no further questions. Okay. Mr. Cole, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, well, the, 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 the liquor store itself is not that building is separate from the uh, grocery store? That's correct. It's a separate building? They don't share a common wall? It's, it's a separate, it, it's connected, it would be connected to the supermarket. It, 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 it would be connected to the supermarket. So they have, they share a common Common wall, correct? Common wall, yes, that's yeah, correct. Okay. It's right next to the supermarket. Okay, that was my confusion as as to the liquor store being a separate building. Yes. It's not. If it's if it's got if they share a wall, then it's the 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 whole building is continuous. That's I want a clarification on that. Other than that, Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything else. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Shin. <clears throat> Not a question, but just uh, summarizing my understanding of what the situation is here. So basically what, what my understanding is this contract that you're trying to secure with your anchor for the shopping center is a driver for getting a settlement, if you will, and getting moving forward with the center, which ties to your liquor location. So. That's that's the issue, and the problem with our side is, well, Vice Chairman Watts expressed. I think that's that. Is, am I understanding that correctly? Okay, just wanted to clarify 
what that is for, for me, just so that I can understand the big picture. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, other, any further questions? Yeah, one other thing. These, these changes now to the original contract, right? Those have been submitted to Mr. Beavers, is that correct? No, I have not sent them. And okay, are I, you I going don't, to? I don't need to see these changes. You don't need to see these? No. Okay. It's not necessary. All right, that clarifies that. Okay. Uh, anything else? I'm just, I'm just asking for 30 more days, if possible. Do we have a motion? Or in discussion first, let's do the discussion. Yeah, can we do I'm sorry, discussion? yes, I, I apologize. Um. <laughs> I guess what would, be, what would be the motion that we are seeking in this case, approval of 30 days extension? I mean, his application here. You have three options, right? right. Yeah, what are the options? You can, you can give him a 30 day extension. You can deny, right. or you can ask him to withdraw. If you ask him to withdraw, that allows him inside of 90 days to reapply, right. and not and and be able to to. Um, but if you, if you deny, then can't he can't for file for 90 days. <clears throat> right. It's actually 180 oh, days. Oh, I'm sorry, 180. Sorry. Right. 180. So six months, right? Mm -hmm. So he won't be able to apply. Apply, but if we give him a 90 day extension, is that correct? He's asking well, for 30. Well, that's not been asked for, and that's not what we're doing here. We have. Right. No, in your scenario of the three things that we could do mm -hmm. would be to grant him a, a, a 30 day extension, right? Yes. Table it for 30 days. It's not a extension. Okay, so it's tabled for 30 days. Yes, sir. As this has been. Okay. Or just outright deny it. That's the second option. Which means that then he cannot reapply for- 180 days. 180 days, or number three would be to- He could say, I'm gonna withdraw the application. And then he could reapply when he's ready. a few days later, if he wanted to. But he would have 90 days to- it would have to come back to here and you start the process again. Right. But he would have 90 days to do that, correct? No limitation. No? No time limitation. No time limit on that? If he withdraws, no. If he withdraws, okay. Which, but, but I, in, would, I would hate to, um, go ahead, Mr. But Schoen. in order to, for that third option to occur, he would need to come back with what the board is asking, which is yes. settlement, contract. And That's correct. Understanding of the completion yes. date of the, the center and, and I would hope to have that. That's correct. Right, with, a, with either option, he would have to, right, with, with, option, with two of the options. Right. And, and no. I would hope to have that. I would definitely not to not, to, to not de deny the application, right? That, that and, seems and if too I, punitive, right? And, but, but and, I and would, if I don't have that, then I would expect to withdraw. Yeah. I, now, my it seems to, to me that that I'm sorry. given. Oh, sorry, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard. Uh, it it just seems to me that because this continues to to drag out, right? Potentially no fault of your own of the applicants. Uh, I, I get that, but I mean there there just needs to be some definitive. Uh, things are just so you know, speculative and just up in the air about what it is we're going to be approving. And I know from, from I can't speak for the rest of the board, but for me, I would, I would honestly like to see you withdraw your application. And when you have all your ducks in a row, you've got a groundbreaking date, you've got, you know when this door is gonna be completion, you've got a build plan and construction is underway and you know, have a date for when you're gonna open then reapply. I mean, that is just the simplest and cleanest way to do it, well, in my I, opinion. I would hope to have that within 30 days. I really do. I I just I, don't want to be back here in 30 days having the same discussion again. And again, it's, I can't remember the number of times, but it's been more than two, at least, and that we've been extending this and extending this and extending this. Well, some of it's, right, so some of it's not my fault. I, I understand no. that, and I'm not blaming you. I, I get that. 
So from my perspective, I understand both sides, and I think Mr. McKay really wants desiring, highly desiring for this contract to occur, finalization of the contract to occur with your anchor, potential anchor. And I think from his perspective, I realize the track record hasn't been that great, but what's the implication to us in, if we do, did grant him another 30 days, it does come back, it is onus is on him to come back again. It's a time, yes, we have to spend time, but given from my perspective, perhaps he has had you know, 30 some plus years, give him the benefit of doubt, at least when he comes back, he realizes, okay, I can't, okay, it's, it's a done deal at that point. You know, what's the implicate? What's the impact to us? It's time time that we would spend here one more time. But uh, why don't we give the customer, if you will, the best benefit of doubt here, and give him that you know the last chance, if you will, if you call that. That would be I'm, my. I'm happy to make that motion. Well, my my question here is that, and perhaps you can answer this, David. The inventory that you have now, right? I don't know what happens to that inventory. If you were to withdraw, okay, what happens to that inventory that he has right now? It becomes his personal property. He it takes home. it home and he cannot resell and it. And can do whatever he wants with it, right? Resell it, that's all. He just can't resell it, okay? My other question is then that is any of this, the tabled application, the extensions that we've granted and everything else, is any of this part of, is the contract part of this whole thing contingent upon approval from us that you're granted it? you know the the transfer of the license well, well well yes you know i'd have to work also work with the state to see what how they would like for me to you know you know i, I it's in a bulk permit i mean excuse me it's in a bulk storage permit right uh, that, right now that's not the question he's asking you I well believe. are no, you he, asking about his inventory right now or yes no, no 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 your your answer to the inventory was and what you said uh tammy was that that, that becomes your personal property. Mm -hmm. You do whatever you want, you just can't resell it. Okay, That's so correct. there's there's Christmas party inventory for this year, you know? I guess, I don't know, you know, private party, whatever. But uh, my question, the other question to this, Tammy, is that is that contract contingent upon our granting you the transfer of the license. No, that contract has nothing to do with my inventory. That's but not that, what he's saying. No, 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 no. Not, not the inventory. The contract. I'm talking about the contract of you opening this liquor store and transferring your license from Charlotte Hall down to this new location. <laughs> is, is that contract in any way, shape, or form contingent upon us as a board granting you the transfer of that license? Is it written in the contract that? No. No? No, the contract, no, the contract, no, no, the contract is not. Right now the inventory is in a, is 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 in a box storage with the right, state right. Of, with no, the state of Maryland. Understand all of that. Can I, can I try to yeah, clarify yeah, it? Maybe. Is it a is this deal busted for you, and and the grocery store going in there? If Dave McKay does not open a liquor store at the end of the of the shopping center, if you don't you know understand where it's not about the inventory, it's about your business. If you do not build. You, and, and occupy the store on the left, far left side of it. Is the is this a done deal? No. Okay. No. No. Okay. That's All right. What you want yeah. Yeah. No. That's, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Excellent. No. So, so, any further discussion? No. 
I can make a motion, I guess, b before I make the motion, I would like to ask the applicant if they would like to withdraw their application as a consideration. Not at this time. Okay. Then I'll make a motion. Okay. Um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we, I don't know if I need to make a motion to do this to table it for 30 days, but I'm going to anyway. I'm gonna make, would have to make a motion. I'm gonna make a motion that we table this, the application for Dave McKay to transfer Dave McKay liquors, class A1 beer wine liquor license located at 37670 Mohawk Drive, Charlotte Hall, Maryland. 20622 to 30005 Three Notch Road, Charlotte Hall, Maryland. 20622 to table it for 30 days. Till the next meeting. Till the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'll second that. We have a first, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. I'm assuming that, well, I guess we could say this, right? I just want to. I want to state that I don't think you have the votes here in 30 days. If you come here and and yeah. and there's no change, I mean, at that point, I'm going to tell you that you you need to you you would I would recommend you withdraw on your application and and not be on the agenda. That'd be the my recommendation is the the best way to to end this, and then you could reapply. Right. Because what happens is if you hear us, if we, you come here again, then we're going to have the same discussion and it could very well be just a denial. Right. I, 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 I know exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. So we have a first, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, that was that was my uh, Mr. Chairman. That was my concern that we, as a board, would make that tabling contingent upon. It doesn't anything. need to be contingent. He just has to know where your heart is. He, so yeah, but I mean, this, this, unless there's this new evidence well. or something that that greatly changes this. Right. So anyway, we have a first, we have a second. Any further discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Thank you. We have one opposed. Three and one. Mr. Watts opposes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. We don't need to read our, that's what I figured. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Corner liquors. Violations. Employee, Nikhil Patel. The above individual, Nikhil Patel, was an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6-304 of the Alcoholic Beverage Article and the, of the Anacoded Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please come forward, be sworn in. Do you hear, hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Why, well, just, uh, just as, as guide, you know, first. We can't hear you, hon. Can you speak you. in the Speaking microphone? The microphone please. Yes. What do you say? Say again. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I have a little bit true. I have. We have. Yes. Are you, are you saying yes? Yes. Okay. Can you please state your name and address for the record? My name? Yes. Nikhil Patel. Please speak in the microphone. You can say. You can say. Yes. Thank you. Nikhil Patel. Thank okay. You. And your address? Uh, for see, my home address. Yes. yes. Just one second. I look out. I'm not sure. Okay. Mr. Patel, did this? Event has to say to do he needs his address. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, pardon me. That's okay. 
Um, would you go ahead and... Oh. Um, I guess he's looking up his address. He's looking up his address. Okay. 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 Mr. Patel, all we need is just your address where you currently reside. Just one second. Mm -hmm. I got you. Hmm? Okay, yes. Four seven three six eight Greenway State, Lexington Town, Lexington. Okay. Okay. Very good. Did they, um, so um, did this event occur? Did, did you sell to a minor? Try to sell a minor. Yeah, I feel the bad. Okay. Okay. Would you please read the facts then, Mr. Beaver? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The uh, facts underlying this violation are as follows. On February 11th, 2023, approximately 5, 10 p.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a sheriff's office uh, confidential informant, 19 years of age, into Corner Liquors, located at 46920 South Shangri-La Drive in Lexington Park, Maryland, um, wearing jeans and an athletic shirt. Once inside, the confidential informant received one 12-ounce can of Monaco black raspberry cocktail and one 12 ounce can of Monaco mango peach cocktail and proceeded to the checkout counter. Uh, the confidential informant placed the alcoholic beverages on the counter for purchase where the clerk later identified as Mr. McKeel uh, Patel proceeded with the sale. Mr. Patel failed to ask the confidential informant for any identification for proof of age. A confidential, confidential informant completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premise with the beverages. The confidential informant thereafter made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Stephen, Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit outside the premise. Confidential informant described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to the unit members and advised that the clerk did not ask for identification or proof of age. Thereafter, Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the licensed premise, identified themselves, and informed Mr. Patel that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage confidential informant without asking for proof of age. Mr. Patel, Mr. Patel initially denied selling the alcoholic beverages to the underage person. However, he did ultimately admit um, that he did not ask the confidential informant for identification prior to the purchase. Mr. Patel was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that he and the licensee would be summoned to appear before this board. Photographs of the alcoholic beverages were taken by the officers and placed into evidence, and all of this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. You're welcome. Questions? Uh, Mr. Patel, how long have you been uh, working uh, for the uh, corner liquors? Uh, two years. Three years? Yeah. Okay, how long have you been selling alcohol there? Uh, we, we sell alcohol, I, I feel the bad, you know, but we fell, we fell. Have you been selling alcohol the entire time you've been employed there? Uh, not alcohol, we sell something to, to Monaco's boss, uh, to Monaco, just... Uh, uh, how long have you personally been responsible for selling alcohol? I just, uh, I'm first time, I got just a mistake, you know. I, all the time, I got I go, working is a good also. I, every time we check the ID, uh, every person, but you know, just I uh, ask uh, ID, you know, first uh, she came here and I can ask ID. Can you, can you show me ID, it says, dear? She got out the door, she got out the door. After, next customer is a regular customer, he's a 27 years old, he next customer. He say, 
if you don't mind, uh, if you don't mind, can I, can I, yes, I say, if you don't mind, can I have next? He came here, he asked, oh, excuse me, yes, dear, you come here, I got you. After I say, you, you pay, buddy. But after she gave it for my hand money, after I am fell, you know, I feel the bed, I sell the alcohol underage, you know, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, thank you for your recollection of what of the events. Um, what uh, what training have you received from your employer for verifying yes. the uh, age of? Right now, we know got training. You know, my boss got uh, just uh, manual training. You know, he just uh, he got it, uh, training. He you check the ID and everything. I know. Just uh, check the ID. We know. But just, I don't know. Uh, are you reminded that on a daily basis? Is that weekly training, monthly training? Is that, how often do you get reminded of, of ID verification? Uh, we try, I didn't, uh, we try. I don't think you understood that question. I don't think you understand either. Um, <clears throat> um. How often when you, when, you, when you go to work to sell alcohol, What sort of reminders are you provided by your employer to check ID? What a program? What is does that? does your employer mm -hmm. tell you yeah. at the start of the day that you need to check IDs? Just uh, I check the every day. He say every every day I'm check the ID. Okay, I have no further questions. Mr. Patel, are you uh, any relation to the license holder? No. You're no relation to the license holder? No. You just have both have same last name, correct? Yeah, the same, uh, same boss, just a little bit uh, relation, not very close. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Shen? I have no questions. There's no questions. Okay. I have one. That's a Is this your first offense? First time that yeah. you sold? Okay. That's the first time. Thank you. I have no other questions. Discussion? Uh, I'm gonna ask, I'll ask anyway. I, Mr. Patel, uh, are you still employed at Corner Liquors? I'm sorry. Are you, yeah. are you still employed? Yeah. Okay. Will you continue to be selling alcohol? Uh, no. No. So your boss has said you're you are not going to sell alcohol anymore. No. No more. No more we sell. You know. He Next did, I time. I that's I got first time a mistake. He's saying mm -hmm. that he's not going to sell to an underage anymore. And that's what no he's more. saying. Okay. No more mistake. Uh, it's my first are, time with the mistake. Are you going to be working. responsible working. or he's working? Working. Will you be working to sell alcoholic beverages to anyone? Okay. Yes. I got it. Okay. No problem. What... What measures, I'm trying to think how to ask this question. How can you assure this board that this mistake that was made won't happen again? Just my mistake. I feel the guilty, you know, that's my mistake. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Uh, are you checking IDs? Yeah. Everybody's ID now? Yeah, everybody, I checked the everybody ID. I got it a green also, you know, every month coming uh, State Mary County, I got green card also. I got three and four card also, I have a proof. We okay. check all the time ID, but I got first time got a mistake, you know, not all the time. I feel the guilty, that's why. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. I have one question. How long have you been in the United States? 
uh, how, how long I am working. Uh, uh, no. When did you come to US? I'm coming to five, uh, two, two years ago. Two years ago, okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Patel, when I asked but, you how long you've been, I'm sorry, uh, when I asked you how long you've been you. employed, you said three years. Three years, yeah. And then now you just told me that you haven't even been here for but two. I think originally he said two. Initially, <clears throat> he just heard it as three. Uh, really? How long have you worked at corner store? How long two, I'm yeah. working at corner liquor, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm working two, two years. Three years? Two years. Two years. Okay. I may have mis uh, misheard then. I, My I've apologies. heard three as well. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. Sir. Anything else? No. Anybody want to make a motion? I will. Okay. Knock it out. <laughs> yeah, knock it out. No, no, no. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> uh, I make a motion uh, to find $250. As your first offense. Okay, I got it. No problem. Yes. Okay. I'm angry. We have a $250 a motion for to find him $250. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Okay. So, Mr. Patel, yes, sir. you've been fined two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. You have ten days to pay the fine. Do you understand that, yes, sir? Okay. And you may, within thirty days from today, mm -hmm. appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of Saint Mary's County. Do you understand? You can appeal. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyway, good luck and. Uh, Go over and see Susie, please. Okay. Violations. Licensee, Shambu Hai Patel. Sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the um, Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please come forward, be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Let's begin. My name is K. Patel, and my address is 20951 Freedom Run Dai, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Okay. <laughs> My name is Alpesh Kumar Patel, uh, resident at 20951 Freedom Run Drive, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, board members. Uh, David Weigel on behalf of the licensee. Mr. Alpesh Patel is the son of the licensee who's here. He manages so he can ask any questions and also help with translation uh, issues. So we, we would admit to the, the violation. Okay. And you are, sir? I'm the attorney. The attorney. What is your name? David Weigel. David Weigel? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Chairman, would you like the facts underlying this violation? I would, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> On February 11th, 2023, at approximately 5 10 p.m., the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a sheriff's office confidential informant, 19 years of age, into Corner Liquors, located at 46920 South Shangri-La Drive in Lexington Park, Maryland, wearing jeans and an athletic shirt. 
Once inside, the confidential informant retrieved one 12-ounce can of Monaco Black Raspberry Cocktail and one 12-ounce can of Monaco Mango Peach Cocktail and proceeded to the checkout counter. Confidential informant placed the alcoholic beverages on the counter for purchase where the clerk, later identified as Mr. Mikhail Patel, proceeded with the sale. Mr. Patel failed to ask the confidential informant for any identification for proof of age. Confidential informant completed the purchase of the alcoholic beverages and exited the licensed premise um, with the alcoholic beverages. Confidential informant thereafter made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit outside the licensed premise. Confidential informant described the sale of the alcoholic beverages to the unit members and advised that the clerk did not ask for any identification for proof of age. Thereafter, Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the licensed premise, identified themselves, and informed Mr. Patel that he had sold alcoholic beverages to an underage confidential informant without asking for ID. Mr. Patel initially denied selling the beverages to the underage person, but later admitted to selling, making the sale to the underage <coughs> confidential informant um, without asking for ID. Uh, Mr. Patel was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed by um, the sh uh, Sheriff's Department and that he and the licensee would be summoned to appear before this board. Photographs were taken of the alcoholic beverages and placed into evidence. All this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. And that completes the recitation of the facts, you. Mr. Chairman. Questions? Um, Mr. Patel, the attorney, um, so this is your second violation within a year. Um, the last time I reviewed the minutes from the, from the previous time and you guys gave us assurances that this wasn't gonna happen again. What changes are you going to make to your policies and procedures and your training of your employees to improve your track record? Um, well, they have in effect 100% ID checks. That is the policy they've informed the employees. And I, 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 would, I do wanna correct the record. I think it might've been lost in trans, translation. Uh, the, the employee was up here and Mr. Alpesh Patel can certainly testify to this under oath, has been employed with them uh, since November. Uh, he's received training from Mr. Patel. Um, this was a mistake by the employee. He, the licensee engages in the mystery shopper program. I'm happy to pass up photographs of, of the green cards all within uh, the past this year of 2023, including one for that employee uh, from January 5th, 2023. Um, so there was no indication uh, on the part of the licensee that this employee uh, w would make that mistake. Um, they, they train them, uh, they do 100% ID checks, they're gonna be getting an ID scanner, I've spoken with them about that. Uh, they're going to schedule additional uh, training uh, for all the employees, certainly uh, for, for this employee, um, to make sure this never happens, happens again. Um, so other than that, I, I'm not, that's the policy, they're providing the training, they have the scanners, they have the 100% ID check requirements. This employee had no track record of doing this, in fact, had a track record uh, of passing uh, the voluntary, the mystery shopper programs, as did the other employees. Again, I'm happy to pass up four or five photographs from, from January uh, up, up through present. Um, so obviously there needs to be more training um, and more constant reminders to employees uh, that they have to be checking IDs 100% of the time and, and not selling to anybody uh, who doesn't, is not of age and does not provide satisfactory ID. Um, you know, so again, you know, beyond doing the sales themselves and being over their shoulder 100% of the time, um, you know, I, I, they certainly uh, have the policies in, in place, um, but certainly there needs to be, I guess, more driving at home and, and they're certainly willing to, 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 to drive it home and, and remind these folks of it uh, on a daily basis. So. Is the employee still employed there? He, he is still employed. Yeah. Okay. So you said he was hired since November. What? training specifically was he provided before he was allowed to sell alcohol? We, we give basic training like, you know, check ID, how, how many form of the ID is uh, required and, you know, is legally accepted and stuff like that. 
So we did basic training before, you know, we get, we give you train to the sell alcohol, that's what we give it. And in fact, right now we are working on to get the schedule to TEM certified because we all are, my all other employer is TEM certified besides him. So we're going to get him TEM certified too. And you mentioned the scanners. Um, you can describe to me again how the scanners are, are how they are employed to help the uh, to help the, the clerks check ID. So, the, or is that not in place yet? It, he's good, it's not in place yet. It's, it's not pla not in place yet. I'm going to get that one. I'm working with the companies, so, you know, proper um, uh, ID check machine. So we're gonna install that and we have every single person uh, show their ID. Even I have it all over my storage, no, you know, little uh, sign that's you know under 35. Uh, have your chair ID ready. Okay. And is there current signage um, there at the point of sale to help remind employees? Yeah, I have a, that one too. How, how soon will these scanners be in place? Uh, probably like, a, matter of fact, like two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, from, I'm working in, so get the you know, uh, proper uh, okay. machine and then we're gonna install it there. Mr. Patel uh, has had RAST training? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there any sort of, I guess, daily reminders for employees? Yes. Either yes. verbal or written. Yeah, especially every single day we remind them, my all employer. But in fact, that happened that time. We, um, me or my dad, well, both of them is not in there because my dad has a surgery, so he's in the hospital in February 7, and he got the surgery. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, that time that happened incident, I was not present there. But other than that, mostly daily daily basis, I'm going every day, remind my all employer, and make sure they check ID every, everybody. And that's why we have like 100% passing code on a mystery shopper. You said there was 100% passing on the mystery shopper? That, yes, that's right. That's what he's okay. told me. Now you're you're working at the store every day now? Yes, means I, operational wise, I, uh, I'm the top of the all employer to make sure they're doing their job properly. How many employees do you have? Uh, three. Three, not including yourself, right? No. Okay. Any other questions? No. No. I I have one for Tammy. Yes. How effective is this training when we're, we have people who are English as a second language and they, they're struggling with it? Uh, normal, now you're talking training as in our training yes. or TAMS? Tr yes. Okay, um, TAMS training is actually not available anymore. Um, our training, normally what happens is, and, and we do, we're acquainted with our um, licensees. Uh, if there is a language barrier, or English second language, we usually do ask them to bring somebody who can, who knows the native language and English well to help translate. Yeah. I've had uh, licensees come in and get a copy in advance of our manual so that they can go home and translate it into their native tongue. So there are ways around it. Um, and of course, we're always there afterwards to give one-on-one -on -one to anybody who needs it. Okay. Is that our responsibility or research? They have to reach out. But we offer it, but they, they need to reach out and ask. Certainly, you're willing to bring a translator to the, the training. So we make sure the employee understands the training, right? And, and, yeah. and make sure he has one-on-one -on -one additional time afterwards if necessary to make sure he, the point is he has to understand it. It's not just him going in there, sitting there, checking the box. You have to make sure, because it's your license on the line the next time. Um, so, you know, you need to make sure he understands it and it's on yeah, you to provide those I, I, translators. Yeah. I would suggest yeah. it be you, um, but that's, I'm not gonna hold your hand and, and drive you there, um, so. Now, Mr. Pat last time he had training, right? Did he attend it? 
I don't have the records on me, but yes, he yes. Would have had to because it was part of his. Yeah, we, we did, and I got the, yeah. You went with him, yeah. yes. So is it appropriate to to have him go again? I mean, it, it's part of the. Uh, the I understand that. Yeah. I'm gonna say it's, un, it's unusual that this is so. It wouldn't be the first time that we've had a licensee come in more than once in the three year period. Oh, I know that, but. Uh, but Rass, okay. again. Okay, so. Because maybe something didn't stick. Okay, so cover all that, right? Yes, okay, so now you guys have any discussion? Well, my concern is not so much the licensees, uh, um, having the problem with the English language. It's more your employee who was up here who violated the first time, his understanding of English was let let for me left a lot to be desired. Yeah, but the point that that's over with, right? And and it's the business's responsibility to to, to train the individuals. Correct. And we have Correct. no say in sending have penalizing mm -hmm. that employee to to go to training. Correct. So oh, that's I understand. The responsibility I understand. Is, I'm just making a point. That's Take all. that in consideration, I think, when, when you decide what you want to do for, um, for the violator. Well, I just want to make it a point here, too, uh, Mr. Chairman, that as long as I've been on this board and I'm the senior member right now, this is the first time I've seen a, viol a second violation by any licensee since I've been on the board. There's that I can recall, okay? So. Doesn't happen often, thank God. Yeah. I'm gonna make a motion. Okay, go ahead. Um, so based on the uh, facts presented in the testimony uh, given uh, uh, for the sale of alcoholic beverage to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverages article and the annotated, annotated code of Maryland 5.04J of the rules and regulations of alcohol beverage board of St. Mary's County. Uh, Sham, I'm gonna, I apologize if I was, do not pronounce this correctly. Shambuhai? Shambuhai. Shambuhai uh, Patel. Uh, I make a motion for the $750 held in abeyance from the previous violation. The automatic. Automatic. A thousand dollar fine for this violation, as well as RAST training to be completed within 90 days. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. <coughs> okay, we have a first, we have a second. Any discussion? Maybe uh, just comment in that. Our goal here is for you to avoid this violation. This is a substance that needs to be controlled. So you, you need to be taking this very, very seriously. Because potentially, if you come back here again, you may lose your license. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So we're not going to want to lose the license. So we're yeah. making so, sure that. So just be forewarned. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion to a um, thousand dollar fine and rash training again. Correct. So any of any other discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Patel, you have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may, within 30 days from today, appeal the decision of the circuit court, I mean, to the circuit court of St. Mary's County. Do you understand, sir? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Go see Susie, please, sir. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Have a good day. Yes, sir, you too. <clears throat> okay, applications. 
Oh, um, Chairman, I just wanted to inform you that Ms. Baird from uh, the Creek was is, is now here if okay. you want to. Okay, then we'll we'll go to the creek then. <laughs> or the creek. <laughs> That's the same as Kaylee. <laughs> okay. Back to old business. Extension of conditional approvals. The creek, Arthur C. Brinkley and Celeste C. Baird uh, request 90 day extension of approval. Please come forward and be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Celeste Baird, 20628 Golden Thompson Road, Avenue, Maryland, 20609. <laughs> Thank you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Question. Tammy, do we have a letter for... Uh... I don't, but Miss Baird had put in, she had called us, put, sent us a message that she was in traffic. Is that why you were not, un, you were unable yes, to pick up? Yes, it takes me a bit over an hour to get here anyway, and it was ridiculous traffic. I didn't even stop to get Charlie because I was already late. We're up past Clinton area, so. And they're I'm not asking, sorry. They're, they're not, this is not the first time here. You've already heard and, and approved their application. Just okay, so we don't need a letter for Mr. Brinkley? I don't believe so. No. Okay. All right. Okay, well, so what's going on? Um, we actually have the permit, so that's new news. Um, we have it <laughs> hanging in the building. Um, we have equipment inside, refrigerator, stove, um, things mocked up, hoods. Um, it's there temporarily right now, but just as a mock up. And then um, the health department will want to look to make sure that that's, you know, where things should go. Um, and we are. Uh, Originally, when we talked about the grease trap, um, they would not give us even an estimate until we had the permit in hand. Um, so that is underway now, and they needed to see where the uh, the approved plans, where that was to be um, placed and what have you. So that is where we are. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Celeste, do you have the the planning permits for the uh, grease trap and all that? Right here, sir. You got them? Okay, thank you. Yes, and the health department has also approved uh, menu, my HACCP plans. Um, I think we're, we're finally farther ahead than we've been in quite a while. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. So, do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion uh, that uh, we approve the request for 90 day extension to the Creek, uh, Arthur C. Brinkley and Celeste C. Baird. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? And I have sec I'll second that. Okay, Richard Shin seconds it. Any further discussion? Is that conditioned on health department approval? No, no, no sir, you've already it's made your conditions. Yeah, we already, okay. yeah. Just giving them more Thank time. You. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, thank you, good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you, Celeste. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Applications. Application of Richard Dwayne Thomas, David Thomas, and Yolanda Butler to transfer Bramley Inn, Bramley Inn LLC, Class D, beer, wine, liquor, license from Ernest C. Carter and Martha J. Carter, and trade as Waterview Inn, Waterview Inn um, LLC, 23153, Pleasant Lane, Bushwood, Maryland, 20618. Please be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Excellent. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, David Thomas, 
11463 Stoneboro Court, La Plata, Maryland. Yolanda Butler, 46770 Almar Street, Lexington Park, Maryland. Uh, Richard Dwayne Thomas, uh, 10810 um, Constitution Drive, Waldorf, Maryland. And good afternoon, board members. My name is John Quinn. I'm the attorney for the applicants today. Welcome. Please go ahead and present your application. Thank you. So the applicants here who have already identified themselves are members of uh, the Waterview Inn LLC, which um, intent is applying for this license, a transfer of a Class D beer, wine, and liquor license currently held by Mr. and Mrs. Carter, who uh, run the Brambley Inn LLC in Bushwood. Mr. Carter uh, is here in the audience as well. Um, the, the parties are uh, purchasing the property and that necessitates the uh, need for the transfer of the license ultimately. They intend to run the uh, restaurant down there. Um, they are very familiar with the previous restaurant, Brambley Inn. They're very familiar with the community. Um, and I know they're excited to, to keep that establishment running and uh, to, to, uh, to keep it going. Um, I will say that Miss Butler is our resident licensee, having lived in the county for I believe almost 30 years. Over 30 years. Over 30 years. Um, and she has a significant amount of experience in the uh, uh, liquor services industry and the sale of alcohol. Um, none of the parties have previously held a license, but uh, they understand completely the, the great responsibility that comes with holding a license. And they understand that they have to uh, strictly adhere to all the state and local laws and regulations uh, that govern here. Um, so again, we're, we're requesting the transfer of this license from Mr. and Mrs. Carter to the applicants who will run the business as the Waterview Inn LLC. Thank you. Are there any Members. conditions? It, it will be conditional um, pending a trader's license, state uh, fire marshal approval, closing of the sale, and um, a UNO, an occupancy permit. Um, now, that was on the outdoor seating, but it was my understanding earlier this week, I spoke to Mr. Thomas, that you were withdrawing your request for outdoor seating at this time? Uh, that's correct. We, we plan on extending the deck, so we're gonna put up. Uh, so so they're gonna, they, they're withdrawing their request for the outdoor seating on those decks because they do wanna renovate, that their plan is to renovate them and make them a little bit larger, and then they will come back to right, the board. Right, simplify then. the whole process mm -hmm. right now, okay. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So Tammy, once again, Traders Fire, traders close, fire Closing Sale. Um, closing and closing. UNO. Trader, UNO. Traders Fire and Closing. Yes, because I have a UNO, but okay. when I put in the outdoor seating, they kicked it back. Okay, so, so that takes care of that, okay. It's not a problem. Okay, okay. So if, if we, I guess if we approve the app, I just wanna make sure I understand, the application no longer has outdoor seating on it, so Correct. we can approve the outdoor, we can approve the application as written. Correct. Okay. <laughs> okay. Questions, anybody? No, sir, I didn't have any. Do we have a motion? I can make a motion. Go ahead, sir. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the application of uh, Richard Dwayne Thomas, the David Orlando Thomas, and Yolanda Danette Butler to transfer Brambley Inn, Brambley Inn LLC, Class D beer, wine, liquor license from Ernest S. Carter and Martha J. Carter and trade as Waterview Inn, Waterview Inn LLC, located at 23153 Pleasant Lane, Bushwood, Maryland, 20618 that approval is conditioned upon a uh, trader's license approval fire marshal approval the closing of the sale and the use and occupancy no she's already said so that's taken care of no traders yeah. only for the outdoor if they if they're real throwing we don't need that then i traders. still managed to misunderstand Sorry. um no well, that's okay so and every it's contingents upon those previous three without the uno Okay. 90 days. Do we understand a motion? Yep. Be 90 days. Correct. Yes, ma'am. 90 days. 90 days. Okay. Yep. And I'll second that. Okay. First, second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, board. Just keep coming to me when you're getting stuff done, all right? Okay. All right. Take care.
Any licensee applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which a licensed place of business is located or proposed to be located may, within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such a decision to the Circuit Court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Okay, Hacienda Guayoba, I mean Guayobas. Guayobos, sorry. Application of Juan Carlos Herrera to transfer Hacienda Las Guayobos, uh, Hacienda Las Guayobos LLC, Class B restaurant, beer, wine, liquor license from Jose C. Herrera, administrator of the estate of Maria um, Ruiz, and continue to trade as Hacienda Las Guayobos, Hacienda Las Guayobos LLC, 19661 Three Notch Road, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Please be sworn in. All right. Do you hear, hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, yes. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Oh, uh, Name is Juan Herrera, uh, 21762 Saratoga Drive, Lexington Park, Maryland. Okay. Present your application, sir. Oh, um, I, uh, I'm sure I'm just here to uh, help transfer the name because uh, my father uh, switched his to uh, when my mother passed away, the license she was holding. So he asked me to uh, put mine on his to help him out. So I uh, agreed to help him out because um, I work between the two, so, um, mostly in one, but um, my cousin uh, is the manager at the one I'm representing, and uh, they've never had a violation that I know of. And so, um, and I, like, a, what's it called? Uh, I've had my RAS training and TIPS training and, you know, tell the, the applicants and all the workers, you know, uh, you got to make sure you ID and check. So I'm just here for the help transfer because I know how the responsibility is about that and, all, and how it's supposed to be done. And who hasn't had a violation? Uh, um, the one, uh, the Hacienda is what I mean, or at least from what I recall. Like, they're, like we, we run it pretty smoothly, so I was saying, it's, you know, I know how to do, represent it responsibly, you know, as a new. Well, Hacienda had a violation, right? No, it was, it was Tacos Hacienda. This is Hacienda Los Gallegos. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting confused here. This oh, yeah, sorry. That, okay. He made the names too similar. <laughs> I know. That's why the question's being asked. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Are you currently a license? Uh, I guess I'm confused. So he's oh, no. not a licensee at the other location? No. No. May I? Have yes, ma'am, okay. please. <laughs> so when uh, this was in a state, Ms. Ruiz passed away, which is um, uh, Juan's mother. My <clears throat> condolences. Um, yeah. The... Uh, her, she had sole ownership of this restaurant. Okay. Juan and his four siblings are the heirs, so they are each equally owners of this establishment now. Juan being the oldest is the one on the licensee, plus having the most, like he said, responsibilities and, and experience. Okay. That's why his father wanted him to be the licensee. Be the licensee. I see. I see. Okay. And you'd stated you'd had RAST training Yeah, before. I've had it before, and then I did it again this year, and then I'm still pretty sure TIPS certified. Okay. And you, you took that on your own? Oh, no. Um, well, they set it up uh, for us. Okay. But, yeah, I, we did it with Miss um, Tammy, and then I did it with, I forget his name, but the, the TIPS guy, yeah. Okay. Impressive. Any other questions? No. And this is conditional, just, I'm sorry. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. The conditions are you need to get a change of ownership occupancy permit from across the street here at land use. Okay. Okay. And then also the fire marshal has to come out and approve that. Okay. For Hacienda. Yes, okay. For, for oh. Los Gallabos. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So you says occupancy. Occupancy and fire marshal. Fire marshal. Okay. <coughs> Any questions? Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Okay. And nothing's changed here. It's just 
No, yeah, it's uh, okay. Just the name. Same, same setup and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll motion. Motion. Yeah. So I'll make a motion uh, to approve application of Juan Carlos Herrera to transfer. Apologize if I'm pronounced here. Hacienda Los Guayabas, uh, Class B restaurant, uh, beer, wine, and liquor license from Jose Herrera, administrator for the state of Maria Olga Ruiz, and continue uh, as uh, Hacienda Los Guayabas at uh, 196613 Notch Trail, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Conditional upon farm marshal and is it occupancy permit? Yes, sir. Okay. 90 days. For 90 days. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. Second that. that. Um, Mr. We'll go with Mr. Cole second it. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good luck. All right. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you. Hey, good evening. Mm -hmm. um, we clearly need to work on our Spanish. Yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Any licensee applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which the licensed place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in the approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any licensee or license, I mean, license or licensee, appeal such decision to the circuit board for circuit court of St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of the transcribing of the hearing of the decision being appealed. Okay. Next. Merchants Lane Fine Wine and Spirits. Application for Aljit Singh and Rajni. Kumar to purchase a class A1 beer wine liquor license and trade as Merchants Lane Fine Wine and Spirits, Merchants Lane Fine Wine and Spirits, LLC 40845 Merchants Lane, Leonardtown, Maryland 20650. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. <laughs> My name is Ajit Singh, and I'm residing at 23450 Kenna Court, California, Maryland, 20619. Rajni Kumar, address 43992 Freesha Lane, California, Maryland, 20619. Okay. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and, and present your application. Yeah, before we proceed, I would like to present this uh, withdrawal application for the BWTS 365 days for the beer and t wine tasting. Okay. The applicants had asked to add the um, 365 day wine tasting, beer and wine tasting privilege to their license, and he has withdrawn that. I understand. Okay. Because uh, the certain condition needed to be met before that was to be allowed, and uh, we will make a determination later on down the road. Yes, sir. So that's the reason for our withdrawal. Understand. And uh, we plan to move in uh, Merchants Lane, 40845 Merchants Lane, unit number two, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650, once the remodeling is completed, which is moving along fine. And uh, Smeco, I think they are about to finish before the 15th of May, and we will get the UNO fire marshal approval, everything after that. And we are planning on moving beginning of the June or later part of May, whenever the premises is become available to us. Okay. So we'll plan on selling liquor, beer, wine, like Monday through Sunday, 365 days a year. So. I just have no experience ever of selling alcohol, having a, having a... No, I have a 
16, actually 17 years of experience in the liquor business. Before that, I had uh, experience in retail. We used to have a 7-Eleven, couple of them. Okay. So I do have uh, two licenses held before, Jughead Liquor and then Lex Liquor Wine and Spirits. Okay. But now I sold it and moving, planning on moving into this one. Okay. I asked because I just... One of the things about issuing a license is being a being responsible, you know, good steward of the community and <clears throat> and uh, understanding the uh, the nature of the business is important. Yes, I understand. I appreciate that. Okay. And we do have. I have taken TIPS class also. I've been taking TIPS class every four years, three year, RS80, RAST, like three or four classes. So I, I'm pretty much. So like you'll be be a very much a uh, responsible merchant. Okay, thank you very much. We will do. We'll try our best. Go ahead. Uh, so did, did I understand the I guess construction's not yet complete or? It's just like uh, HVAC is installed, but Smeco I think they're supposed to be completed on May fifth, as per Mr. Tommy McKay. So we are taking that uh, premises from Tommy McKay. We are moving in. Okay. Um, so other than fire marshal, mm -hmm. it sounds trader's like probably license, UNO. And trader's license, fire marshal, UNO. Yeah, I have the trader license. Oh, okay, good. We do have other documentation also. Well, I have the recommendation from, from Leonardtown. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. I have that, but you need a UNO as well. Yeah, that I, is license. that your original? Yeah. Yes, that's original. You, tomorrow, bring it to the office. When sure. Come. Okay, I will do so. Okay, so traders, state fire marshal, and you and I. Okay. Okay, that's just those three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can make a motion. And oh, by the way, was, yeah, um, we we already know that they're it's being built out and it has a a wall separating it from the grocery store to the true ceiling and the utilities are being separated and all that. They're taking over okay. the existing building, sounds like, right? Right, well, it's being built out for them. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so other, other than that, just RAS training in the... That, that's automatic, we set them up. I'm and, sorry. Um, Ajit has already had rest. No, she's going to plan. No, already? we are planning to get it on uh, May, May 31st. May 30. She is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. You already gone? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the application of Ajit Singh and uh, Rajni Kumar to purchase the Class A1 beer, wine, and liquor license, trade as Merchants Lane Fire, Wine, and Spirits. Merchants Lane Fine Wine and Spirits LLC at 40845 Merchants Lane, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. It's a 90 day conditional approval, uh, waiting fire marshal, UNO, and trader's license. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, a, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank Good you. luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Any licensee applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which a licensed place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such decision to the Circuit Court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Flour, Donut, and Bakery. Application of Elise E. Rice to purchase a Class B restaurant, beer, wine, liquor, license and trade as Flower Donut and Bakery, Flower Donut and Bakery, LLC, 22675 Washington Street, Unit 102, um, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. Please be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? 
Do. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Elise Rice, 26745 Queen Tree Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. If you're going to talk, you got to swear in. You got to give your address. Sorry. <laughs> I also am at 26745 Queen Tree Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland. Your name? Ricky. Your name? His name is Ricky Rice. Sorry, oh, Ricky Rice. I'm Cadence Rice. I'm at 26745 Queen Tree Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's like you're all related. Welcome. Um, go ahead and present your application. Sure. Um, my family and I are partners with another couple that we have opened or are planning to open. Um, a cafe type full service bakery in the heart of uh, Leonardtown Square. Um, we have a cafe type environment and we would like to institute um, the serving of spirits within the, the cafe to, to complement the rest of our our business. Okay. Members, questions? Um, yes, sorry, carry on. Okay, is everything built out, ready to go? Um, just about, uh, our full build out uh, is almost complete. Um, we have a few like uh, nitpicky things. We don't have final health department approval yet. We do, however, uh, Tammy have our fire marshal approval. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So you're waiting on health. You have fire already. Yes, sir. And you already have the UNO. We do not have the UNO yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. And a trader's license. We need a business. License. Which we do have the trader's you license. You have that. Yes. Got to so bring it to you. You got we'll the traders. We do have the traders. Okay, I have to bring it to Tammy. Okay. Okay. So then I, I would, is the hell, is the fire marshal a copy yeah. or is that you yours? Have, hey, give her, give her one. There's two of them. There's a yellow and a pink. Doesn't matter which one. Okay. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take either one. Okay. okay. So that takes care of the fire marshal. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So the only thing you got is UNO. UNO. Okay. Which will happen next week. So in this diagram, um, you're leasing the entire, this entire section here? This section in the front, which used to be the uh, showroom for Bell Motor, yes, sir. Is this the entire building or just part of it? No, just part. The entire building is owned by the Gibsons. We are in the front section, which housed um, the showroom. Yeah, but the whole showroom area? Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's accurate, yes. Okay. And this is the supplement? There was an original, do you have the original too? Uh, I have to check, it might okay. be a baker. So just add fire marshal on there. Add it on there, okay. Thank you. You understand when we do conditional, like 90 days, that any time in that 90 days you bring it in and you're good. Okay, okay? yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for the, for the 90 days to be up. Okay. Where, so I'm looking at the diagram, where, where do you plan to store? Oh. Um, if you're walking into the bakery, we have a section to the left that is a uh, delicatessen type area where we'll also house breads. And in uh, that section, we also have some shelving uh, necessary to for some merchandise, which we would house our wine and then we also have a cooler coming from a uh, guy distributing that we would ha house our um, beer in to start with mm -hmm. so you're going to give the little cafe there a run for their money a little bit yeah yeah okay i hope <laughs> <laughs> so this is a selfish question here on my part i'm kind of excited the baker is coming in so you guys are actually going to be Baking things there. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. We're our, our, no, our we niche don't have is, a bake. We don't have a baker around here. <laughs> well, there is a small one in um, oh in Salted Scoop. Yes. Yeah. Just, oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit smaller scale than we are. Yeah. Going to be. Um, We're going to offer um, our niche is going to be uh, fried made-to-order cake donuts, as well as other baked goods. Um, and we are also going to do pre-made sandwiches, deli. Accoutrements, we hope for wine, things like that. Bagels, mm -hmm. Bagels bread, yeah. Gonna do sourdough bread? Yes, sir. Good. 
<laughs> I've got my starter. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> and are you, so are you currently operating as as a bakery and just asking for this, but you're just starting everything. No, sir, we haven't opened everything together. Up. Okay. Um, and when do you expect to to open? Well, um, to be yeah, really candid and be honest, since I did get sworn in, um, I'm hopeful for the first of June, but I'm not. We're not positive of that yet. Well, I'm, we are hopeful. Okay. We would like to get our um, employees fully trained before we. Um, open, and um, we know that we won't get a second chance as a, a first impression. Okay, and so you're, uh, so it'll be sit down cafe or? Yes, sir. This application yes, is not we for have care. a full dining area where you can sit in. I'm sorry, this sir. This application is not for carry out, right? This they is can all... do carry out, mm -hmm. but they will have sit down dining. Okay, yes, both. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the sit down dining will be. Made by servers or when right now we're strictly counter based. Okay. Um, and uh, of course our plans could change if, if these kind of things happen. But um, we, that's why we would like to use the deli area for exclusivity for the alcohol purposes. Mm -hmm. That way we can designate that particular area just for that service. And then we have a point of sale system installed that would restrict. Uh, certain employees from be able to even access the sale of alcohol based on um, what is it called Katie it's a, re a restriction that we put once they put their employee code in where they can't even access the sale of that item okay yeah okay you're gonna do like an Irish coffee well potentially okay potentially the only reason I asked is I was I googled San Francisco and I, and I was looking at Buena Vista Oh. Down at Fisherman's Wharf. And they make that? Yeah, they, they just, they line them up and then they just walk down pouring. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know if we'll be going like, like about, that. but <laughs> They pour like about 20 or 30 at a time. Wow. Yeah. It's that big of a business. Wow. So as I understand uh, that uh, if someone wants to, to the way you're, Currently going to be set up. Someone wants to purchase an al alcoholic beverage with their, their meal. Then they come to. You've got a specific point of sale, um, and they'll do that there. And then they can take that uh, to the their own seat. Correct. And, uh, Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's what I need. Any other questions? So, again, this UNO is the only thing they need. Correct. Traders, UNO, Health Department, Fire Marshal. Oh. Okay, so, okay. I can make the motion if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application of Elise uh, E. Rice to purchase a Class B restaurant beer, wine, liquor license, trade as Flour, Donut, and Bakery, Flour, Donut, and Bakery, LLC, at 22675 Washington Street, Unit 102, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. That'll be a 90-day conditional approval, conditioned upon health department, UNO, and trader's license. And fire marshal, sorry. Oh, and fire marshal. I don't have and all and of fire. it. Okay. <laughs> the correct. That's good. Trader, UNO, fire marshal, and health. Yes. Okay. 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 Do we have a... I'll second that. We have a second from uh, Mr. Chen. Any further discussion? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir, very Good much. Yeah. Hey, how did y'all's window break? We don't know. Oh, we wish we knew. You, you think it may have been from the Leonardtown Luau? Yes. <laughs> it I happened. Just, no. I wanted to know personally. No, it did not. It, it didn't. Because it was, that Luau was, was on Friday. Okay. Yeah. And the window was still intact on Saturday afternoon at yeah, 4 o'clock. Gotcha. Oh, Noticed it when I came I'm Sunday morning at 7. Gotcha. I was, I was wondering because I, had, I did the Leonardtown Luau mm -hmm. with a young person, and I, I knew it was lasting until late at night. And then when I came in that next morning, I, I, or the next day, I saw it. I think there was a small niche that, and then it just progressed, because gotcha. that's a big window. Yeah, no doubt. I was like, man, what a setback that would be. Yeah, it, it is a little. Really? <laughs> Four grand. Four thousand dollars, yeah. Four thousand dollars for one window. <laughs> Oof. But I'm, I'm just leasing. I don't have to pay for that. Yeah, true that. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Good luck. Come see us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Look forward to it. Sorry. Any licensee, applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents of the, or real estate owners in the district in which a license place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such a decision to the circuit court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of the transcribing the hearing of the discussion being appealed. I'd like to have a cue card. Just hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording. Yes. Okay. This will have an idea. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to the board. No, wait a minute. We have an officer member trade name change. So this is Lunderberg <clears throat> Porto Call Bar deleting Bart Rogers Jr. and adding Patrick Vandergrift. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we approve the <clears throat> officer member trade name change for Lunderberg Port of Call Bar deleting Bart Rogers Jr. and adding Patrick Vandegrift. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Any discussion? And this is uh, actually uh, at the school grounds, right? Right. Yeah. It's in the it's in the uh, yeah. it's in okay. the school. Yeah. In the hotel part. Yeah. Okay, we have first, we have a second. Discussion's over with. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, now we'll move on to the board administrator report. <clears throat> okay, so first and foremost, um, renewal pickup, renewed uh, 2023 licenses went on sale April 1st and needed to pick up, be picked up by April, the last day in April, which this month was the 28th. Um, Deputy Myers and Inspector Hall went out posting notices Thursday before the deadline uh, on buildings so that people, if, if it was just a mere uh, they forgot, it gives them time to get in there versus going in there midnight when it expires. And oops, guess what? You wake up Monday morning and you don't have a license. Now, there were two, there are two businesses, there were a handful of businesses that couldn't or didn't pick up. Um, so. It, as you see in your rules and regs for renewal, starting May 1, it is a $25 per day late fee. Fine. We do have two still outstanding, um, and they are for various reasons. One is working on getting that straightened up, um, and of course the other one is uh, Mr. McKay that was here. He's waiting. It's no sense him picking up the license unless he knows he's got a license. So. Okay, so those two are standing. If, which, which two are they, Tammy? Um, well, I'll leave it. Uh, Mr. Um, Stardust Cafe, I think, Swales. Mr. Swales from Stardust, uh, the old Jolly Gents building. Right, right on 235. And then uh, Dave McKay Liquor. And then um, Dave McKay. Yeah, so is, they Mr. have. Mr. McKay's not being assessed a $25 per day penalty, is he? If he picks it up, yes. Yes, if he picks Even it up. His application's basically it's pending us. Well, no, he has. He, his application for location change is pending. He did put in a renewal. I mean. Okay, two different things. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, if it was, you know, it's not, yeah. I mean, he could have picked it up on the first. He's chosen to wait. Yeah, actually, in, in talking to him, he didn't realize he was supposed to pick it up. So, okay. you know. Um, if they're not picked up by May 30th, or the last day, the last business day in May, then their renewal expires and they would have to apply for a new license. So just FYI. Um, the other thing that I brought up to you, and I, I think we have a little bit of time, um, and, and mostly your attorney is probably going to help me speak to this, is the, um, we have a rule uh, 2.18, it's a, a prohibition against the board licensing a business with, uh, at putting a license 300 feet within, from a public school, private school, or a place of worship. Um, 
as I had sent you, I sent you the language from the repealed Article 2B, which matches the language in our rules and regs, because for a lot of those items in the rules and regs, we didn't reinvent the wheel, we pulled the language from code. Uh, when the Article 2P, 2B was revised, it was not the intent of the revisers to change any laws, it was just a reorganization of the code to where they set, separated titles for each jurisdiction. Um, so the language changes were done just to make, you know, apples <coughs> to apples so that each jurisdiction was using the same language. Unfortunately, in some cases, um, when they changed the language, it actually changed the intent or the interpretation of that law. And that is where we're standing now. I mean, it could be just a simple matter of our interpretation of what's written there didn't evolve with um, the uh, alcoholic beverages article language or evolve with the newer, you know, going from individual buildings of mom and pops to now we have shopping centers that have a liquor store inside. So we've had a few inquiries um, in regards to, and, and through my time, my 20 years, some odd years working for the liquor board, um, we've had a few uh, denials of applications for these shopping centers because the measurement from the nearest wall of the shopping center to the nearest wall of the main building of the school or church was within 300 feet. Even if the actual unit of the business what was beyond that, they were denied the ability to apply, so. Tammy, and I bring this up with uh, uh, Chris, the, uh, the, what we were discussing about Callaway Baptist Church and the Shell Station there at the corner of Callaway, okay? Mm -hmm. There has been a build out since then where the, and I don't know, I don't know for for sure if if the, the building <clears throat> that was the original church <coughs> is now still used as a place of worship or if it's a meeting hall or whatever, because they did build on the other side, which would change the distance. Well, that would be a different topic though, wouldn't it? Well, no, no, no. The thing is that what happened originally was the Shell Station, when that was built out, was two feet short. It was 302 feet. Okay, so you're saying the church from the church building, okay? Who, who expanded? I'm assuming you're saying there's a church. Well, now, now the Callaway Baptist Church has expanded. That wouldn't affect. Huh? That doesn't affect because the, the so, liquor license was already there. Right. And so already grandfathered in. So the, the, cha mm -hmm. the church changing their uh, footprint does not affect the, you can't. The church, the church moved yeah, to the to the alcohol establishment, not the alcohol establishment moving yeah. to the church. Yeah. Correct. So therefore the, uh, the license establishment is okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, but if it had been the other way around, let's say the alcohol, the license establishment expanded, let's right. say, and right. expanded their license premise. Well, my, within, my, let me, let me finish. Within the 300 feet, that would be an issue. <clears> right? My question then is that, if somebody wanted to put a liquor store on the corner where the Shell Station is, could they do that now? Not if it's within 300 feet, no. Well, no, no, no. The, the new build-out for the Callaway Baptist Church, they've moved the church back off of Route 5. So I'm sure that... Why don't, we, why don't we just stick with things that are actually really existing and not work in hypothetical? Yeah, okay. I, I, that's not All right. Sorry, okay. Sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think the issue that Tammy's bringing up here is when you look at the language of our regs, it says um, the board may not approve any license to sell alcoholic beverages in any building, right? In any building, the nearest wall of which is measured, measured in a direct, direct line to the church, right? So that impacts, as Tammy said, that really impacts those establishments that are in, let's say, you know, in a strip mall or some type of extended building, and they're measuring not necessarily to the establishment, but to the actual built, the actual structure of the strip mall, right? Which would preclude them. 
when they changed from Article 2B to the alcoholic beverages article, yeah, you know, they they tried to they tried to keep it consistent, but of course, they failed to realize that words matter. Um, so, Title 28, um, and I think it's Title 28. 1602. Yeah, 1602. Two, right. Um, if you look at that language, which is on the paper that Tammy gave you, um, they're measuring from the nearest wall of the establishment, right? So it's a very su it's a very subtle difference between our reg and that 2816022 that has but, a huge impact but it has a huge impact hmm. so i think the the discussion here is whether we should amend our rules and regs to be more in line with the alcoholic beverage article um 2816022 um to to have that measurement point be from the nearest wall of the establishment right um not the actual whole building. Oh yeah, so we had a discussion earlier a little bit, a sidebar with just the administrator. And, and um, you know, one of the interesting points was that this law was established in 1957, this part of the war, part right. of the war. Sure. And, and in a time that there probably weren't strip malls, you know, and then the other question is, what do you define as a building? Because That's if correct. I build a building, Esperanza Bowling Alley is a good example. You know, they you build a bowling alley, then you build this, then you build this, then you build this. So each one of those are actually physically maybe buildings. They're not part of a strip mall. Right. They were built originally by individual people, just like or in Leonard County, right? You know, there's right. so. So define building. It's right. It's very challenging. It's yes, very it amorphous. Right. Yeah, very amorphous. Right. And I think, and again, I think the, a, a change to our regs to say from the nearest wall of the establishment makes a lot more sense. It's it's clear. It's more concise. I think it's also more in keeping with the whole intent of the of the law. Three hundred feet. Right. To, from alcohol. Feet from the church to to alcohol. Right. <laughs> Not to. to Not three hundred to two hundred and seventy five feet to the for, to to a um, cat op shelter right. is, should not be right. the... I mean, you could have a, a monster building, right? One end, they have alcohol, which is furthest from the church. The rest of it could be a religious goods store, right? But that measurement would still preclude them, right? So um, so I think that's a, that would be a proposed change that well, we What is consider. needed to make that change from the board? Just to, uh, adopt? The board, the board would make a motion to change the language, but what if the the board today? I would just like to know where you stand if you want us to. Put yeah, Tammy's just trying. We're trying to get just to get the board's temperature. If you're interested in making that revision, we'll go ahead and draft up an, a proposed amendment. And then we'll, that language would be on the next agenda. We'll bring it back. The public does see it. Right. So that way, the, the the public has the opportunity to review it. Anybody can can come and speak to it if they have a problem with it. Um, but then you guys would also be able to review and vote on it. Makes sense to me, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we should have a motion though the, to to yeah, move forward to that. You don't really you don't need you don't really need it. Oh, have to you want us okay. to put language together? That's yeah, all I okay. need to know. That's what we'll make the motion. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Okay. On a separate note, I find it interesting. <clears throat> different counties have different. Yes. Was, right. It's very interesting when you read the various counties, you know, yeah. uh, language. Because I'm like, oh, darn, I thought it was going to be easy. Right. <laughs> uh, I just, yeah. And, uh, or I, I thought the interesting one is the one where they measure it from the front door to the front door. What happens when you move the front door? <laughs> Which I thought was very interesting anyway. But but I wonder, like, again, the intent, I, I kind of understand the intent, right? You don't want a school kid to be going, you know, leaving after school to across the street to. Sure. Right? Churches so. have wine until they turn it. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I presume coming back to the chairman, going back to the chairman's comment about the, when this was originally drafted, I think that's why you have churches that are, all right, back in the 1950s, we still had blue laws in place. And, you know, so mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm presuming that's why houses of worship are involved. So. What about Phil Dorsey's office? He's in a in an old church. Yeah, but it's not a yeah, house of worship anymore. <laughs> That's a whole other story. When, when, it, when it's sold, the blessing goes with it. Right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll prepare. We'll go ahead and prepare a proposed amendment, and we'll get back. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Tammy, you have anything else? Uh, no, I'm gonna. Unless you want me, the the cannabis and alcohol coalition um, <clears throat> could not be present, and they did give me a report. So if you want me to kick that out, real quick. Sure. Okay. 
Um, at the last CAC meeting, uh, members from you know the representatives, the partners, retailers association, uh, <clears throat> uh, Maryland State Police, Sheriff's Office, etc. Um, we're given a report of the, they get a report of our alcohol board meeting. They get a report of um, Maryland Alcohol Tobacco Network. We were given an update on that. Learned about state cannabis. Cannabis is um, because it's going to be um, recreationally approved July one. Um, that's the big um, gist of their uh, conversations right now. Um, they are. Um, applying for supplemental funding or grant um, at, to cover $21,700 for the responsible retail form to conduct uh, basically what people, when they tell you red card, green card, it's the secret shopper program. So the CIC puts that together and pays for that for us. And I, I think that's a great program because it does keep people on their feet. You got one AC, you got one inspector, you know, it gets a little tough. Um, Chris Shea, the former um, CAC representative, has finally, uh, his uh, position has been filled and the new coordinator will um, start attending alcohol beverage meetings starting June, okay? Good. Um, they've also, it looks like they're looking into getting the Drug Free Communities Grant, which will provide up to $125,000 for up to 10 years to include the cost of that coordinator, that CAC coordinator. So they've applied for that and they're waiting hopefully for a good announcement come up August, okay? Um, they are working in partnership with the state's attorney's office and Maryland Department of Transportation grant that will pay for project graduation drunk driving simulators during the week of May 30th through June 2nd, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that's, I guess, uh, Project grad, right? The project grad, okay. Um, and they continue to work with St. Mary's College of Maryland, providing sober events. The last event was a de-stressor event during finals week, May 4th. CSM is also interested in doing sober events and discussion will happen over summer break to coordinate with the Wellness Center. And their next meeting will be a virtual meeting May 23rd. Good. Tammy, do we know who is going to administer violations? For well, if somebody's under under. I'm assuming underage buying of. Oh, you're talking the red card, green card. Cannabis. Oh, we're not even going to go there. Let's not go there today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave that one alone for today. Right. Right. Well, you do have. They have to be a, a over 21 to even possess. To buy cannabis. That's right. Wh wh however, they designate it. So. Right. The, the law. But we don't know who's going to. Right. Ultimately, be the only way monitoring that at that. this point in time. The only way that affects us is if, for some reason, they gave, give liquor licensees the ability to sell cannabis, and I don't well, know right. if that's the game plan. I wouldn't even guarantee that. Either. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we're gonna leave that alone. It's not on our radar <laughs> yet. Crash that from YouTube. Right. So don't second guess anybody. That's it. Okay. And that's it, sir. Okay. That's it, huh? Thank you. Um, move on to, um, I guess it's going to be our enforcement coordinator. Good afternoon. Which I skipped again. No, you're, oh, you're no I didn't. I okay. I skipped it for you. Okay. <laughs> good. Um, April, uh, April 21st, uh, we did a succession of um, alcohol compliance checks within the Leonardtown area and south, mainly because it was their uh, second uh, Leonardtown Luau, which was like in previous years, it was the uh, bar crawl. So I took advantage of uh, a lot of patrons visiting a lot of bars within Leonardtown. And we uh, went to 12 locations that day, nine were in Leonardtown, and of that, uh, there was one violation. And um, so out of 12, there was one violation. For uh, <clears throat> the sheriff's office, we arrested 18 persons on uh, DUI and state police arrested 15. And as far as stationary surveillance, I conducted two, uh, both in the south end, one hour each, and there was no violations. Uh, as Tammy stated before, 
myself and Kevin, we did our postings, um, did 24 of them for the north end. Alcohol violations, summons served was four, visited the parks, no violations there. And as far as trainings or meetings, I attended two, which was the ABB meeting and the CAC Cannabis Alcohol Coalition. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Members? Nothing? Yeah, Motion. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> no, it's normally it's. <laughs> Kevin messed you up. I, I did. I threw you off. Normally it's Myers, I forget. Uh, good afternoon. Um, for the last month, I did around 10 inspections. I've been around, I checked three places that it dropped their license, so I went and checked to make sure the alcohol was out of the building. I went around to a couple places where we had some drawings that we had some, we weren't sure about, so I went around and looked at them to make sure the drawings were right or whatever. Um, I did like the 20, 24, 25 postings down south, uh, RAS class, the CAC meeting, the mailer meetings, so. Members have any questions? Busy. Get back to inspections now that renewal's done and yeah. licenses are picked up. <laughs> Join the new vehicle. And join the new vehicle. The inspection's done more efficiently with that new vehicle. <laughs> hey, listen. Yes, he does because he doesn't break down every couple of months. <laughs> okay. Okay. Susie, do you have anything? <laughs> She's uh, happy I, renewal's over. <laughs> sure she is. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second that. We have a first. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.